So in the previous grammars we have seen that in order to you know uh, avoid ambiguity in some of the grammars we introduced uh, recursion. So recursion is like this. Recursion is of two types. Recursion can be left recursion, right recursion. Okay. Left recursion is like this. If I have any production like this, A derives A alpha or beta, which means the leftmost symbol in the RHS is equal to LHS. The leftmost symbol in the RHS is equal to LHS. This is called recursion. Okay, and in fact, it is called left recursion. If I have any symbol on the RHS which is equal to LHS, it is nothing but recursion. Why a variable is calling itself. Therefore, uh, you know uh, that is also called as recursive calling. Now, if I have A derives alpha A or beta, it is also a recursion, but this recursion is right recursion. It is also a recursion, but the recursion is left recursion. So left recursion is if the leftmost symbol of the RHS is equal to LHS, then it is called left recursion. If the rightmost symbol of the RHS is equal to LHS, then it is called right recursion. Okay. So if I have left recursion, the problem is this: A derives A alpha, A alpha, A alpha. If we want to stop it anywhere, you are going to stop with beta, right? Or you can directly derive beta, right? Or you can derive derive 1 alpha, 1 a alpha, which means you can use it one time, 1 a alpha, and then alpha can derive beta, which means beta alpha. Only beta or beta alpha or beta followed by any number of alphas. Therefore, the language generated by this grammar is um, beta followed by alpha star, which means any number of alphas. Now, the problem with this kind of left recursion is if you see this, if you write it in terms of a function, a is going to call A without doing anything first, which means if you write it as a function, A is going to call A and then going to do some work alpha, isn't it? A, A is going to call A and then going to do some alpha. A is going to call A and then do, going to do some work alpha. If you consider that right recursion, it is different. A is going to do some work alpha and then call A. So if you consider these two, here it is going to fall in infinite loop. Left recursion is going to lead to infinite loop. But right recursion, this alpha is going to act as a condition checking, which means there is no way you can fall in infinite loop. The alpha is going to act as an anchor condition. It is going to stop you from following into it. Now, if you consider this uh, language, the language generated by this right recursive grammar is A is going to derive alpha A. A is going to derive alpha A. And whenever you want to stop it, you can stop it beta. Beta. Therefore, the language is alpha star beta. You can either, either directly derive beta, which means uh, directly beta, or it can be any number of alphas followed by a beta, which means alpha star followed by beta. If I use left recursive grammar, I'm going to get this language. But then if I use a right recursive grammar, I'm going to use it, get a different language. Most of the compilers, most of them, compare in the sense, most of the parsers, they don't want especially the top down parsers there are two types of parsers we shall see them later but there is a class called top down parser this top down parser they don't allow a grammar or they don't they cannot uh, uh, work properly if the grammar is left recursion le left recursive therefore we do, we want to eliminate left recursion without changing the language let's eliminate the left recursion without changing the language generated by this so this, this right recursion is not equal to this left recursive grammar. The reason is the language is changing. Now I want to have the same language, but I want to have a different grammar, which is not left recursive and which is not this right recursive. Right? So the language is, I want beta followed by alpha star. This is the language I want to generate. How can I generate this is? Yes. Or let us say A only. Variable A has to generate beta followed by alpha star but if you see this it is not left recursive isn't it sorry it is not a grammar at all the reason is the grammar should not contain uh, stars right alpha star anything like this so i want to eliminate the left uh, this uh, star and all so what i do is i want to generate this language so a is going to generate beta followed by a dash and now it is the responsibility of a dash to generate any number of alphas including zero alpha see a is going to generate beta followed by a dash 
and now it is the responsibility of a dash to generate any number of alphas including zero number of uh, alphas therefore a dash derives either zero alphas which means epsilon or one alpha followed by any number of a dashes isn't it so it is a recursion so which kind of recursion right recursion so understand this a derives beta followed by alpha alpha star that is what we wanted so what i did is a derives beta followed by a dash now a dash is going to derive either zero number of alphas or any number of alphas therefore this is the right gra right recursive grammar which is equivalent to left recursive grammar this one a derives alpha a or beta this is the right recursive grammar which is equivalent to this left recursive grammar therefore in order to eliminate any left recursion you have to follow these rules let's look at some examples where we have left recursion and we try to eliminate them one example is this we have already seen it e derives e plus t or t right so if you look at it the leftmost symbol of the rhs is equal to lhs right now it is in the form of a derives a alpha or beta a derives a derives a alpha or beta it is in the form of that so what is a and what is alpha and what is beta if you can identify it you can directly substitute it here isn't it so in this one a is nothing but e and alpha is nothing but plus t and beta is nothing but t right therefore how can i convert it to this uh, eliminate the left recursion see a derives beta a dash which means e derives beta which is t e dash right and again a dash derives epsilon which means e dash derives epsilon or alpha what is alpha plus t e dash got it so this is the equivalent grammar which is non left recursive which is right recursive and which is equivalent to the original left left recursive grammar whatever language is generated by this the same language will be generated by this without getting into infinite loops therefore uh, we have seen you know we have seen the left recursion and we eliminated it maybe we shall see two three examples more just for the sake of practice we shall see some examples eliminate left recursion from this grammar say the grammar is s derives s0 s1 s or 01 i want to eliminate left recursion from that grammar how could i eliminate it is the left recursion s what is the left recursion if the rightmost sim if the leftmost symbol in the rhs is equal to lhs then it is called left recursion now you could you know imagine it this way it is nothing but a is s a derives a whatever is remaining is alpha and the other production is beta the other alternative right so you can substitute that in this formula you know a is this alpha and then beta then if you want to convert it into you know eliminate the left recursion you have to use this formula right you can remember it is a formula or you can derive it my suggestion is don't by heart anything so here if you substitute it what you get is s derives s derives beta a dash what is beta 0 1 s dash right and then s dash derives epsilon or alpha a dash what is alpha alpha is 0 s 1 s s dash that is the elimination okay. yes uh, let's uh, let's eliminate some um, left recursion here there is a left recursion in this grammar right so this is a this production is fine there is no left recursion this production is fine there is no left recursion there is left recursion in this uh, only this grammar it is a derives a alpha or beta now what is alpha comma s beta is s dash if i have the rule a derives a alpha or beta in order to eliminate it what is the conversion a derives beta a dash and then a dash derives alpha a alpha a dash or epsilon this is the conversion right now here alpha is comma s and then beta is s therefore i have to write l derives for this one beta beta is s l dash and then l dash derives alpha alpha is comma s l dash or epsilon so these are the two productions which can be used to replace this 
these two productions and this is same and coming to this grammar where you have lot of many more than one rule in the right hand side right more than one rule is having left recursion and whatever is remaining after that i am naming it as alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 so the main difference between this grammar and this grammar is we have only a one left recursive rule here we have many left recursive productions in this case that is just extending the previous formula this formula we are just extending so we are going to write a derives beta 1 a dash for this production or beta 2 a dash or beta 3 a dash how many our betas we have so on and then a dash derives alpha 1 a dash for this one alpha 2 a dash alpha 3 a dash so on so that is how we can convert any grammar which is having more than one left recursive, product, left recursive productions into uh, right recursive grammars okay so we have seen two two classifications of grammars till now one is ambiguous and ambiguous and other is left recursive like right recursive yeah uh, so we have seen the grammars are of two types one is ambiguous unambiguous and then we have seen the grammars are of two types one is left recursive and then right recursive see if we don't want ambiguous grammars because we are getting more than one parse tree therefore no parsers will really work for ambiguous grammars so we want only unambiguous grammars and then we don't want left recursive grammars because the top down parsers they will fall in infinite loop why the reason is if i have a derives a alpha kind of production a is going to call again a right therefore it is going to fall in infinite loop so we are not going to use uh, left recursive grammars and one more classification of grammar is deterministic grammars and non deterministic grammars okay so what is deterministic and non deterministic is for example if i have the grammar like this a derives alpha beta 1 alpha beta 2 alpha beta 3 so a capital a on seeing alpha it might go to beta 1 on seeing beta it might go to beta 2 you can assume it that way that is why it is called uh, non-deterministic grammar non-deterministic grammar means we have many options on a single uh, single symbol see let us assume we have to derive alpha beta 3 right and if you see the first symbol alpha and if you see this production alpha beta 1 we might think that this is the right production in order to derive this word alpha beta 3 we might assume that this is the right production in order to derive this so what we do is we use this alpha beta 1 and then we see beta 3 after seeing beta 3 and beta 1 we will find out that it is not the right production therefore we have to backtrack again so that is how the parser will fail so if i have the second production see now i want to generate alpha and the second production is saying that i can generate alpha therefore if i use <coughs> a derives alpha beta 2 then i'll be able to derive alpha but later if i have to derive beta 3 it is deriving beta 2 therefore at this point i'll know that uh, I, I did a wrong thing so i again go back and again here also if i use the third production a derives alpha beta 3 then also same thing happens i'll see uh, i'll see alpha first and then beta 3 first yes now i'll accept it now the problem here is we we are actually backtracking this backtracking is happening because of the common prefixes one or more productions on the right hand side or having something common in the prefixes this is also called as common prefixes problem or non-deterministic uh, grammars the problem with non-deterministic grammars is they will be backtracking if you observe this why this backtracking has happened the main reason is we are actually you know the main reason is this mm, we are actually making a decision of which production to choose without seeing enough of the input see if the input is alpha beta 3 we are making the decision by only seeing alpha we should have made the decision by seeing beta 3 right so if we have if you could see enough of the string which is beta 3 and then make a decision about which one to choose then there would no, there would be no problem therefore i have to postpone the decision making process until i see beta beta 3 
it is also called as left factoring procedure or eliminating non determinism so using left factoring left factoring is simple whatever is common prefix we have we take it as common and write the remaining part as separately so i can write the write it as like this a derives alpha a dash and then a dash derives beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 if i write it this way then what happens is if I have to generate alpha beta 3 first I don't have any choice or I don't make any decision at this point by looking at alpha by looking at alpha I have only one choice and I'll make it a derives alpha a dash I'm not making any decision here and then by looking at beta 3 at later point of time I'll take the right decision which is beta 3 so what has happened here is I postpone the decision making till the next part where I have where I could see beta 3 right so this is called non deterministic grammar and this is the equivalent grammar which is deterministic and the procedure whatever we used in order to convert a non deterministic grammar to deterministic grammar is also called as left factoring left factoring okay so what is the problem with uh, non deterministic grammar most of the top down passes will fail and will have to backtrack if we have non-deterministic uh, grammar like this so we don't want non-deterministic grammar we don't want uh, left linear left recursive grammar and we don't want ambiguous grammars and we have seen how we could eliminate ambiguity by using disambiguating rules and how we could eliminate left recursion by converting it using that formula and now we have seen how to convert a non-deterministic grammar to deterministic grammar using the procedure called left factoring okay so let let's see some examples on how to you know eliminate use this left factoring rule in order to convert deterministic to non-deterministic. Yeah, let's see this grammar and um, is this grammar non-deterministic grammar? Yes, the reason is these two productions are having something in common, right? So at least you have i in common. <coughs> in fact, this i e t s and this i e t s is entirely in common. So just see what this grammar is this grammar is statement can be if expression then statement or if expression then statement else statement or small a or small b <coughs> which is nothing but if expression statement right so see uh, this small a is assignment statement again statement can be if expression then statement or if expression then statement else statement or simply an assignment statement and the expression can be any boolean expression so that is the statement now if i have to generate the word any word you can take any word and then generate it but before tell me whether it is deterministic or non-deterministic it is definitely non-deterministic right so let us use left factoring and then convert it to deterministic grammar if i use left factoring as derives i e t s s dash and then s dash derives for this one it is epsilon for the first rule it is epsilon because whatever you have whatever is there in the first rule we have written it and s dash need not derive anything and for the second one i e t s the remaining part is e s right and uh, since we are not we are not doing anything with this a leave a wherever it, it was it was with s therefore we are leaving it at s and then e derives small b small b is boolean expression right so now we have uh, converted a deterministic grammar to non-deterministic grammar to deterministic grammar and this method is called left factoring right fine and now my question is this the original grammar is it ambiguous or not and then this grammar is it ambigu ambiguous or not how can you find out whether a grammar is ambiguous construct a string take a string and then see if you could get more than one pass tree let me take a string if expression then if expression then statement else statement so this is actually not a string right the reason is there are even variables here right if you look at it there is a variable s e t s it is not actually string there are variables also which means it is a intermediate uh, string which you get in the process of derivation 
if i can show that for this intermediate uh, string if i can get more than one pass tree we could just substitute in place of e and s some variable some terminals and we can see that for the resulting string we are getting two pass trees therefore no problem you know we can even get two pass trees for this and prove that the grammar is ambiguous let's see whether the grammar is ambiguous or not i'm talking about the original grammar s d rise i e t yes i'm choosing the first one and then this s d rise i e t s e s right so this is one pass tree and let's see if you if you could get one more pass tree s d rise i e t s e s and then this s d rise i e t s yes we got two pass trees right therefore for a given string we got two pass trees from the original grammar so we can say that the grammar is ambiguous now after eliminating the non determinism which means after eliminating the common prefixes we got a new grammar now my question is this eliminating the non determinism or left factoring procedure will it eliminate ambiguity also in the sense is this grammar unambiguous so if you have to find out just take the same string and see how many pass trees we get for this string let me see how many pass trees i could get as derives one part is i e t s and s dash and now this s derives i e t s s dash and now this s can be e s and this s can be epsilon right which means i got this one from here and now i will use the same grammar and do one more pass tree i'll just try one more pass tree is i e t s s dash and now this s dash hmm the second s dash is again i e t s s dash and here i'll use e s here and here i use epsilon right so we got again two pass trees we got two pass trees for the original grammar for a given string and we got two pass trees for the second grammar which is non deterministic grammar for the same string therefore what we can say is from these uh, these two procedures we can say that eliminating non determinism or applying left factoring does not eliminate ambiguity therefore ambiguity will always be there even if you convert a ambiguous grammar into deterministic grammar so we we know the reason for this ambiguity is not actually non determinism there is something else if you observe why we got uh, more than one pass tree here it is nothing but this else is associated to this if and this else is associated to this if which means if i have more than one ifs in this statement or if i have more ifs more than number of elses then which if should i associate this else to the rule general rule we follow is always else has to be associated to the closest if which means this else is associated has to be associated with this one this else should not be associated to the farthest if the reason why we failed here is here we are getting two possibilities one possibility is else is getting attached to the closest if as well as else is getting attached to the farthest if this is the problem what is the root cause of the ambiguity ambiguity is not because of the non determinism right so ambiguity is because of the you uh, know inherent properties of the language now what we could do is we could change the grammar format using disambiguating rules and then we could see that the grammar is Uh, you know again unambiguous so uh, this this is a classic example which shows non determinism actually cannot eliminate determinism cannot eliminate ambiguity okay so let's eliminate uh, non determinism in this from these grammars is this grammar non deterministic are there any common prefixes yes the common prefix is like a a a minimum and then you can even see that there are you no know, more more common prefixes uh, more than a 
so my question is this i know if i have some some grammar like this if i have some grammar like a derives a a and then b derives a b is this also a common prefix problem or is this grammar a non deterministic grammar no it is deterministic grammar the reason is the non determinism or common prefixes should be present for the same variable they should not be present across various variables right so in this in this grammar the problem we have is common prefixes the reason is uh, the common prefix is present for the same variable which means more than one productions of the same variable are having a common prefix therefore the grammar is non deterministic right so what is the maximum common prefix here the maximum common prefix is as so either you can take these two productions and then pull out as as common like factoring or you could take these three productions and you can go pulling out a as common whatever you do it is not a problem you can follow any method you are going to get the same same answer right so let me say i want to pull the a first so from the first three productions see from the first three productions i am pulling out a you can go with any method a follows followed by s dash now what should this s dash derive s dash should derive ssbs or sasb or bb and we are not doing anything with b therefore leave b wherever it was right and what should s dash derive s dash should derive s s b s or s a s b or b b right now is this grammar non deterministic no we still have s as common prefix therefore do do for one more step if i eliminate s as common prefix i could eliminate s as common prefix which means s dash derives only in this place s dash derives s followed by s double dash now what should s double dash do now s double dash should derive s b s or a s b therefore if i replace these two productions with these two productions right then you know it is going to be fine that is eliminating common prefixes let's see how to eliminate common pre prefix from this one the next grammar is this grammar non deterministic yes it turns out that the grammar is non deterministic so what are the common prefixes here common prefix is either you can take b as the common prefix or bs as the common prefix in the three so i'm going to take bs as the common prefix in all three of them or you could have even taken bss and bss as common prefix in the first two productions i am going going with the take i am going with taking bs as common prefix in all the three productions right so first i'll take out bs as common then what do i get s derives b s s dash now what should s dash derive s dash should derive for the first production the remaining part second production remaining part and the third production remaining part therefore s dash should derive for the first production what is the remaining part s a a s or for the second production what is the remaining part s a s b or for the third production what is the remaining part b right then what about a we didn't touch a we did there is nothing no to take out in a as common therefore leave a wherever it was now i got this grammar is this grammar non deterministic no it turns out that we still have this is non deterministic because it turns out that we still have common prefixes in these two productions what are the common prefixes here s a and s a right therefore what i like to take out as common is s a in these two so leave s production as it is s derives b s s dash or a leave it as it is and in the second production s dash ha huh, take s a as common if i take s a as common then s double dash and we are not doing anything with b therefore leave b here now what should s double dash b s double dash b it should derive a s or it should derive s b so therefore this grammar is the non deterministic version sorry this grammar is the deterministic version for the given non deterministic version so you can know you could have followed other method also instead of uh, pulling out bs as common initially you could have even pulled out uh, you know bss and then you know, again we could have done the 
second step third step however the final grammar you are going to get is the same one right you could follow any method okay